Hello, I'm Dr. Will Jordan from the University of Alabama at Birmingham, and this is a podcast for the Society for Vascular Surgery about carotid artery stenting. Carotid artery stenting has emerged as an exciting treatment option for carotid artery stenosis. From the 1950s, when carotid surgery was first born, carotid endarterectomy has emerged as a well-supported and well-documented therapy to reduce strokes related to carotid artery stenosis. As our population has aged and technological advances have occurred, Miniaturization for correction of the carotid artery stenosis is now offered through carotid artery stenting. As stenting procedures are most often performed under local anesthesia near the femoral artery puncture in the groin to treat the obstructive lesion located in the extracranial portion of the carotid artery. While stents are also used in various vascular positions throughout the body, carotid stenting has undergone rather intense scrutiny since its initiation in the 1980s through intense clinical trials in the 90s and finally a limited FDA approval in 2004. Today, vascular physicians use carotid artery stenting as a complementary treatment tool for treating obstructive lesions. Stents are used to correct the obstructive lesion in this neck artery without removing the offending plaque. While this therapy differs from carotid artery surgery where the offending plaque is removed from the artery, stenting uses a metal screen to trap the plaque, then prevent embolization to the intracranial circulation where cerebral ischemic symptoms such as a stroke might occur. Considering the great concern about the embolization of material into the intracranial circulation, there are embolic protection maneuvers that have been engineered and are now utilized during the carotid stenting procedure to limit some of the stroke complications that might occur. These embolic protection devices, sometimes abbreviated EPD, add an additional component to the carotid stenting procedure but most clinicians agree that this methodology can reduce embolic complications that may cause a stroke. Additionally, the results of carotid artery stenting can be improved by optimizing the medical management of patients, including antiplatelet medications such as clopidogrel, cholesterol control medications such as statins, and appropriate blood pressure control. While not all strokes are related specifically to blockage in neck arteries, we do recognize this area of vascular disease is readily correctable and can prevent strokes from occurring. Currently, carotid artery stenting is approved for utilization in hospitals that have demonstrated efficacy and understanding of this technique in specific clinical circumstances. Approval is limited for those patients who have symptoms that are referable to carotid artery stenosis with a greater than 70% stenosis demonstrated by appropriate imaging techniques such as arteriogram, CT angiogram, MR angiogram, or ultrasound. Additionally, The patient must be considered high risk for surgery as judged by a surgeon who is credentialed at that institution to perform carotid endarectomy. These limited criteria for carotid stenting are based upon clinical trials where there was demonstrated equivalence for treating certain high risk patients compared to carotid endarectomy. Carotid stenting may have a lower non-neurologic complication rate compared to endarectomy, particularly when general anesthesia is used. However, many physicians can perform carotid surgery without undergoing general anesthesia, potentially reducing the cardiac risk that may be inherent to such an anesthetic technique. Additionally, carotid stenting can be undertaken for a broader range of patients when it is done under the auspices of an approved clinical trial or an ongoing registry that is established at an institution. These methods of limited release for carotid stenting provide guidelines for Medicare reimbursement for these patients. While patients can pursue these therapies separate from their own insurance carrier, all patients should be appropriately informed about the eligibility for insurance coverage based upon these guidelines that have been established by the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services. In summary, carotid artery stenting has emerged as a tool for treating carotid artery stenosis. The appropriate application criteria for this tool should be judged by a physician who is familiar with carotid artery disease in his or own practice. Any patient who seeks an evaluation for carotid artery stenosis, whether symptoms are present or not, should seek consultation with a physician who is familiar with both carotid endarterectomy and carotid stenting. Such a physician should also be familiar with the medical therapy for carotid artery stenosis. Ideally, patients may get the most balanced presentation of appropriate treatment options from a physician who is credentialed to perform both procedures at the institution where he or she practices. With appropriate and continued efforts towards evaluation of these patients, we hope to provide appropriate stroke prevention for our patients who can live longer and healthier lifestyles. 
This podcast is made possible through a grant from Cook Medical. To learn more about your vascular health, visit vascularweb.org.